Hey guys, so this one we're going to take a sculpt and break it into separate parts and pieces as quads using quad remesher. So let's just get some kind of sculpt going here first. I'm going to be using the remesher, control R it. Yeah, we'll use the uh, grab tool, set fall off to projected. Let's just get a shape going, kind of generic shape, anyways. Use mesh filters, set it to smooth. We can click and drag to the right. Do that a couple times if needed. Let's just sculpt out a more interesting shape here. Remesh as needed. Let's see what we can get going. Maybe use the scrape tool. So a lot of times you're making these kinds of shapes and whatnot, and you just want them to be broken up into different little parts. And that's the main idea. Blender, you know, it's not too bad for sculpting. It just gets a little squirrely when you're doing um, like a big mesh, right? And it, it isn't broken apart. So a lot of times you got to break it apart, right? kind of get more performance out of your sculpts and higher detail on each one of them. The scene can hold a lot of detail, but not the individual objects sometimes. So, but you'll do these like voxel remeshes, fix poles, create shapes like this. And you might want to break this up in a number of different ways into different shapes and things like that, different panels or segments or whatever. So you use booleans for this, All right? And so you can use a shape to control the split basically. And this is what I was talking about. I seen, or I showed this, it's not seen, showed this on the channel before. Uh, you can do this, but you want to use high segment count usually on your bevels. We're going to use this as a Boolean shape at some point. Let's do a cylinder. We're going to do a high segment count on this one too. We'll do 64 for this one, but we could definitely use a higher segment count than that if we wanted. Scale it into this area. We'll cut it right across that little ridge too. Why not? Okay, we'll do a number like that. Let's do one more one across the bottom here. We'll bevel this back corner like that. So we have like these opposing bevels. All right. See how that works out. So now make sure they're wide enough in this case. We can do hard ops for this. We select this one, select the base. We can do a shift Q and do a slash boolean. Okay. See how that works out. Now we can do this one, select the base, shift Q, slash boolean. This one, select the base, shift Q, slash boolean. All right, you see how this one kind of failed here? Like it, oh, no, it actually worked, sorry. I thought it failed. All right, anyway, so they all worked out. Sometimes it'll fail though. If it does, between your booleans, add a weld modifier. Wherever it starts failing, a lot of times this will fix that problem, okay? And so we have these shapes now. Here's the main thing with these, shade them auto smooth. When you do these booleans like this, you see how they create like this hard edge here. That's good. Quadri Mesher likes that. And so we can do that. We can shade everything auto smooth, basically. Make sure it's just creating those kind of hard edges. It's going to detect those for the most part and um, be able to work with it. So Quadri Mesher, you could use normal splitting, perhaps. We're going to leave the default settings, turn on symmetry for X, and we'll just do the base shape here, the bottom one. Okay, boom. And you can see it knocks it out like so. It's okay. It could be definitely be better though, right? So let's increase the quad count to like say 10,000 maybe. Try remeshing it. I want to get a density that's a little bit higher than this. 20,000. Sometimes you got to go higher than you probably think you would want to. You can see it. it's not too bad like that. Okay, so for this one, we do the same thing. But you can see it's too dense now, so we got to change the number around. And I wish we could set like a global density value. That'd be awesome. But it's not, that doesn't exist apparently. Okay. That's pretty close. You can expect some of the edges to sharpen up by accident or whatever. It's pretty much fine. This one I'm guessing is going to be about 10. Should be about that. Trying to match the resolution, meaning like the edges matching them up. Close anyways. They don't have to be perfect, but close. If it's too dense, or if it's too not dense enough, it's not going to look right. So this one's obviously going to be somewhere in between. Try like 8,000. You can see that's pretty close. It's not too bad. Anyways, all we're doing here is we're breaking it up into various little objects here. We've remeshed them. Hit Control 2. Shade them all smooth now instead of auto smooth. And um, yep, we split it up that quick, right? 
And so it's rather cool that you can do this. If you don't want a piece, you can just you know get rid of it or something. But this is definitely a cool way of working with Geo. And as long as you don't have too many like sharp edges, you shouldn't have any mismatch issues. Like these rounded edges work really well. Um, so don't keep them like super sharp. That's all I'm saying. But if you want to try that, you could. I mean, in reality, there's nothing that says you can't try doing more hard surface like shapes. Or maybe like um, this is chamfered. And this is where usually quadrant measure kind of freaks out. I experienced so. We'll try it though. See how it works out. Let's extrude that out, bring that down, extrude that out. Little subtle things like that sometimes throw it for a loop. And so if we do this one and try to do a slash balloon now, right? Didn't seem like it worked, did it? Let's try it again. Okay, what's going on here? Should be working. Something, oh, the back edge was lined up with it. Yeah. Okay, so something wasn't working, right? When you do these shapes like this, a lot of times it goes Hayward. But it actually looks like it's working out pretty well. These are very simple. No, not the top one, is it? So you could try using normal splitting when that happens. In this case, it's still just going to fall apart. Sometimes these meshes do that. Um, so you, there's a good odd chance you could still try. Um, doing like a bevel on something, maybe before the boolean, like this, right? And then do that before the boolean. And instead of using normal splits, we'll just use angles again. It'll also detect normal splits, shade auto smooth them. We'll see how this works out. And we'll lose the uh, the edges here, potentially, right? That's one of the things that might occur. But you can remesh them still. And you can see that works out much nicer that way. Not as many uh, major issues, but like I was saying, you lose the edges. You can't combine those two together as far as I'm aware. Uh, doing it in that manner. So if you apply this bevel, what we're going to see is that we can try to select these particular edges here. And you mark these as sharp. I'm gonna use hard ops mark. I should mark them just the way I need them. It's alt clicking, alt shift clicking, Q marking. And you see where that's going now. So what will happen is we can use auto smooth still. Let's it real quick. You can use normal splitting. Shade auto smooth, right? So those should be split like that. We'll see how this works out. And we remesh. It's going to keep them sharp. It looks pretty bad like this, but when you shade it smooth and you subdivide it one time, it's not too bad. You might still have some discrepancies you got to clean up, but um, for the most part, it's another way of going about trying to preserve that edge, is marking things sharp, basically. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's a possibility to use it in that manner. A little tricky though, isn't it? To do all that. A little bit more. Um, I'd say prone to error, perhaps. Trying to go through that whole process like that. And you would have to do kind of the same thing here on the bottom. You can see I use the wrong bevels amount on the segments. So probably wouldn't work out as easy or as well. Um, doable, just not as good. Which is kind of weird, isn't it? Like, aren't they the same um, mesh? <laughs> aren't they? Same bevels? Maybe not. Anyways, I didn't bevel it before I cut it, I guess. So. Anyways, you don't have to adjust the settings now because you already have it set up. But Yeah, you can see this one created a quad. So we lost the mark sharp there. It's not really looking quite the way I'd want. I connect that to that somehow. We merge that to there. That's, that's going to be problematic. That's all that's going to be. Let's see if we can't work something out a little bit better, even if it's wrong. 
yeah, that's where those bevel segments can be super important. A little trick here with machine tools. You use a cursor selector. You select all these down the middle. Actually, you don't need machine tools for this, but if you hit, is it shift two or no, shift one? Yeah, shift one. It'll collapse them. Or you can just do uh, Xing collapse edges. All right, boom. So that's a cool little trick. You don't need to do that. Hey, that one almost worked out. All right. Anyway, so that's separating objects, getting quads out of it. And the reason you do this, by the way, a lot of people question this kind of stuff. So while we have a subdivision on it right now, that's great. We can get rid of it. You can add something later on, like a multi res, right? So you can make this a really dense mesh and continue sculpting on it with hard surface alphas and things like that. And little sections and chunks too. So it's not going to be, you know, so heavy when you're doing just one object and it's in preview necessarily. So you want to flatten that edge a little bit later, do some refinements, you know, something you can do or draw some damage into a surface. You can use this as your high poly and bake it to a low. You just have to retop of this um, to create the low, more or less. It'd be too much, I think, to optimize this by hand, so it'd be better to just retop them and create like a shell around this as a single object, perhaps. Or you could still do it in sections and parts if needed, but if there's no need, you know, don't do that. Anyway, so that's, uh, yeah, that's breaking up voxel remesh sculpts. Uh, in this manner, we're going to do it another way in the next video. We'll do it with um, more of like uh, doing solidifies and panels and things like that. All right. So I'll check you out on that one.